good, looking good. Three, two, one. Last week, Seattle photographer James Kennedy saw something unusual. A webcam of Seattle traffic practically non-existent. This was shortly after Governor Jay Inslee's announcement to cancel events and plans involving large gatherings. So he grabbed his camera and took advantage of this unprecedented moment. I can finally go get shots of all those lines and things that I've wanted to see, like without all the like the uh, the cars and the clutter and stuff. The streets of Seattle looked almost abandoned. Parking was easy to find, but people were not. It was really cool to get in the middle of the street and be able to frame a shot without having to worry about being run over or look like a weirdo with a camera in the middle of the street. These unusually quiet streets of Seattle became this photographer's playground. He called his series of photos Silence in Seattle. I don't think I would have ever gotten those shots. Like there are some places where you just can you can't get a car out of like the scene. Like some of those streets, you're, it's just not going to happen. His photos soon went viral. Some called the scenes eerie, while others say it's unusually beautiful. I don't know, it feels really good that I might be able to like add a little bit of like calm or document something in history. After Governor Inslee's declaration a week later to close schools, restaurants and bars, Kennedy decided to capture what that looks like here in Spokane. I didn't feel any kind of like melancholy. I just felt like, like I was saying in my post, it just felt like a place that was kind of on hold. He found some similarities between Washington's two largest cities, tons of parking, near empty streets, and sites he would have never noticed before. They thought it was really cool to see the, the city in a, in a different perspective. I, I had never even thought that, never even considered that people haven't ever seen it like this. I wasn't trying to put like the doomsday vibe in it. It was just, we're not abandoned. It's just, we're on hold for a second, you know. I, I believe that we're all going to be okay. Amanda Rowley. Crunchy News. Okay, so what I was really influenced by, by going out and taking the photos out in Seattle, is that, like, as a photographer, I'm always trying to find, like, something in its element without people around, and it's maybe has something a little bit to do with, like, the solitude or something like that. But in any kind of tragedy, there's an opportunity. Um, it's how you decide to look at it. You can either, it's kind of one of those things when you get up in the morning and you stub your toe, you can either decide that your day is going to be shit, or you can use that day as an opportunity to make things better. Our ability to connect with one another on a local level in live music has literally been stripped from us. Only a musician in the local scene knows better than anybody that for music, it is not just a matter of trying to get famous. It is a coping mechanism. It is a way to balance the everyday bullshit that we get thrown right at our doorsteps. And now we don't have that. Bands aren't the only ones affected. Venues that have spent their entire lives putting together their empire are being forced to shut down. Well, Tony B just got handed its uh, life sentence today. Uh, not uh, being able to open until uh, August uh, with any capacity at all. Uh, so this could be the last time you ever see me on film. We've been closed since the 13th of March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so what, it's May 24th, so we're going over two months now. We're in phase four. Uh, in the Washington lineage of businesses reopening, which means that the earliest we're gonna be open is in the middle of the summer. Uh, but it's not that easy, because we're a touring live music venue, which means that basically, like when we're told we can reopen, it's not like tour buses are gonna show up the, the next day. So we're in this for the long haul. It's sort of scary, it's sort of weird. And since our primary uh, wear is live music, uh, we can't really take that curbside, so we've been pretty much dead in the water for a couple months. Um, done some fundraising for my staff uh, through a GoFundMe page and some merchandise and some other benefits. 
And uh, we did our first live stream tonight as part of the benefit weekend that McCannamus and Yes Productions was really awesome to put together for us. Hey, my name is Danica, a.k.a. DJ Cynic from Mechanismus.net. And uh, to talk about what the virus is affecting and how it's affecting our promotion group, um, it's definitely affecting us very negatively. You know, we have had to really adapt and innovate with the COVID-19 pandemic in order to keep our venues alive. And we adapted very quickly. Uh, I had no idea how to run Twitch two and a half months ago. And I went from having no idea to pretty much working together as a collaborative with this crew to pull off something very amazing. And what we've been able to do for the High Line and El Corazon and to support industrial music and keep our scene alive is something that I know the entire crew is very proud of. And I look forward to seeing what we can do going forward now that we have all of this knowledge and we've kind of taken this platform off. Fucking COVID and shit. And this is, uh, you know, this is what it is. This is atrocity, girl. This is dry. And this is weird. This is the apocalypse. You guys don't understand. Everything is shut down. Everything is shut down and we are boozeless. And there's certainly no oh more white claw. The bars are gone. The Wait, restaurants are gone. What is that? Alcohol. There are no <laughs> venues to play in. What do we do? Hey, I'm Zach. I'm Buzz. And we're from Dead Animal Assembly Plant. And we're here to talk about the pandemic. Coronavirus. Hi, I'm Starby66. And I'm Bishop Freeman. From Toxic Zombie. And we're here to talk about our quarantine. Yes. And how is your quarantine, Bishop? It's like any other day of the week. We are coping. We uh, have worked for most of the last year on a record called Silver Bullet that we're super, super proud of. And uh, we were set to release that in June. And then the fucking world <laughs> ended. Um, it's had several effects on us. Um, the first thing definitely was shows getting canceled. Um, that was a big, big bummer, especially considering we just got out of the recording studio and dropped our new full-length album, Void of Silence. Um, luckily, we were able to do our two album release shows, which were very successful and a blast. Um, but unfortunately, that's all we've been able to debut of this album. We had our first West Coast tour set up for 2020. Our plan was to do a minimum of three tours this year. Of course, all that went right out the window. Um, regarding even that first tour, we had about a $3,000 merch order that uh, spent about a month stacked in my office that we, of course, couldn't pay for because the tour was canceled. So, you know, pretty dramatic stuff. It, it took me a good three, four months to even book the tour. It took about 45 minutes to tear it down. Um, it, was a, it was a hard blow. I think uh, we can't practice together. That's definitely an effect. It, it is really sad when we see that a show uh, that we normally would have played, just like tonight, we were supposed to play a show in Olympia, but that is canceled. We've had to postpone the release of our new album, Long Way Home, which we recorded at London Bridge Studios with Jonathan Plum. We spent about two years working on that, so it was it was devastating for Rev and I to decide to postpone the release. Um, we've had to postpone a music video shoot. We've had to postpone a West Coast tour. We have merchandise for said tour sitting in our office. We've lost the opportunity to play shows. We've lost the opportunity to hang out with all of our pretty loud and crazy fans. We are quarantining together because we decided we can't stay away from each other. Well, that too, but also because, well, you're not working and I'm not working either. Yeah, so, so we both lost our jobs. Yeah, due luckily to Johnny and Jess have their COVID. jobs, but this has been such a hard time for everyone yes. and Atrocity Girl, Absolutely. but we're trying to make it work. Yes, we are. Um, long story short, for the sake of keeping my family safe, I've had to choose to stay home and not be a part of the practices over the past couple of months. Um, but it's difficult not seeing my boys, not being a part of the creative process of the new songs are being written. I mean, other than people getting sick, I don't really see an issue with this, man. Traffic's <laughs> great, I see my kid all the time, you know? It's not bad, but it, it's it's kind of affecting everything musically, because, you know, we had, we had goals and plans, and we were fucking, we were almost there, you know? We were almost ready to where we wanted to be to go have fun, and, you know, bring you guys, you know, the best, of, you know, versions of us that we can bring, you know, not 
now we're just kind of set back a little bit. I feel, you know, a little rusty on the kit myself. Um, it's right around the same time I ended up getting a, a new job. Um, and I relocated from Seattle to Los Angeles. So I am coming at you from Los Angeles. Still uh, trying to keep myself busy, getting learning this new job, but at the same time still keeping busy musically. Um, haven't done any live streaming or anything like that, but uh, working on a few options there. Up until uh, December, I had been doing a lot of work. Uh, after January, uh, things started trimming down. Uh, shows started getting canceled, and uh, I started spending a lot more time at home. As far as bands, like between... Evelyn's Casket, Raw Dogs, and Hades Machine, like, collectively, it's like a total of ten shows that I was supposed to play just in, like, the la in the next in the next two, three months from when this initially happened. Washington started to lock down little by little, but it's just a fucking bummer, because, you know, fucking ten nights, I don't get to go do what I love, you know? It's obviously affecting us show-wise. We had a tour planned out for um, July. Uh, July 4th, we were supposed to be playing at Audio Feed, um, which is on the East Coast. We've had all this mapped out and scheduled off and everything else, and, and obviously that got canceled and pushed forward. And Well, it sucks. It blows. Really, we had We had shows booked. They got canceled. We don't know when we can play shows again. We don't know what the hell is going on. Fuck, I bought tool tickets. I can't even go to that. Damn. God damn it. I bought the wrong tickets. I thought it was like a show for tools. Shut up, dude. <laughs> uh, we had a handful of shows. And uh, seeing them get canceled or postponed one after the other. Uh, kind of uh, heartbreaking, to say the least. I work on five projects currently. But my main one is the project that has my songs in it. And it is being affected the most. We, this is the first time we practice with us. The first time we practiced together. in two months. All together because yeah. of it. Yeah. We were yeah. ready to start booking shows when all this happened. Yeah, this pandemic has got us screwed because our, our producer, the, who is also playing drums in the studio for us, got COVID and yeah, he's getting, he's not having a good time. I miss my bandmates, I miss the band practice, I miss playing now. It's, uh, yesterday we were supposed to have a gig in Tacoma and that would be super fun, but um, as you all know, we need to stay home. And that is serious. It's a pandemic and we need to take care of ourselves, we need to take care of the, our loved ones, we need to take care of our community. What's up? Hopefully this uh, video quality will do. Uh, I just want to give you an update on where I'm at with my recording here. Um, I started recording this project. It's a seven song EP. I started recording it uh, about two months before all this lockdown shit. So this really hasn't affected me much. Um, I only work a couple days a week, although uh, my job just went into non-essential. So uh, uh, that's kind of fucked for me. So it's affecting us in a number of ways. Uh, first, we have a new album coming out called Bring Out the Dead, which is gonna be released on Armor Light Industries. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to lock down a release date because they wanted to release it to coincide with a tour to support it. it. Really helps album sales. And of course, since there's no playing at all, they're hesitant about locking down a specific date, which is understandable. That's kind of crappy. So things aren't too abnormal for us, other than we're not able to go out and enjoy live music or perform live music, so that kind of fucking sucks. That does. That really does, because we had some good shows lined up. Yeah, some good shows with good bands. We were looking forward to it, and now we have to wait until the fall, which seems like so far off, so. This timing is very interesting because we've been working on this album for... Writing it for two, writing recording it for, two, it for recording a year. for over a year, and we... It, the whole premise is self-care and mental health and going through the, the trials and tribulations throughout because not every day is a good day, right? So sometimes you're at your lowest low, but then there's other days where you pick yourself up out of that fucking dirt and you just carry on because 
That's, there's no other option. You can literally just wrestle the day to a draw and call it good because that's all we really get. We're just, we really are hoping everyone can stay safe and healthy, but we are concerned, obviously, <clears throat> as musicians, and we would love for the music, um, the musicians and the music community to make it through this intact. And we are just supporting local musicians as much as we can. It's also impacted our rehearsals with the new quarantine in the Stay at Home Act and social distancing. Our rehearsal space is, is rather small, so we've actually had to suspend rehearsals at this time, um, which is quite unfortunate. Um, major bummer. I, I miss the guys tremendously. I miss playing live. I miss all of the fans. I miss all of it. So it's it's um, been pretty rough for all of us in that regard. To find energy to do just everyday tasks and music has always been a great outlet for me for regaining energy and right now I can barely keep up with my work um, tasks so it's not easy. You think about movie theaters, you think about hotels, you think about concert venues, theaters, uh, and I mean music theaters, things of that nature. Um, the impact is dramatic. People can't gather in mass as a result of this situation. You know, not just for bands, but I'm talking right down to the person that sells you your overpriced beer at some venue somewhere. Um, the impact is, you know, biblical, for lack of a maybe more humorous term. We had some shows that we finally got. Cryptotropa. Cryptotropa, that and Chop Suey. Like, we were working really hard to get these venues, and we finally got these shows. And get canceled. This, this, this year for us was going to be a good year. Uh, we just brought in a new bass player and unfortunately he's only had the opportunity to play two shows with us due to everything that's happened. Um, so needless to say we're, we're stoked and excited to finally get back out there. So we've only started to go a little bit crazy but not too much. Not any crazier than it just fucking blows, like especially like Raw Dogs, we were gonna play with lower class brats and fucking drowns and I was fucking ecstatic for that. And like they probably like lower class brats have probably been like the biggest name I've played with as far as it goes in like bands from punk rock history and So for me, uh, when this all hit I ended up catching a cold and uh, you know, I didn't think I had COVID and it turned out I didn't. Um, but was forced out of work for, for several weeks because of it. I had to self quarantine and you know, play the safe route, you know. And also, as a result, I didn't see my kids for uh, almost two months, you know, because of this. And that was really hard for me. The, well, the, one of the worst parts about it, though, is that you know this is the first band that <laughs> was the first band I've been in for almost eight years, and I've never been a vocalist in a band before. And you know, they got these guys gave me a really big chance to. You know, show my true colors and show that I can do it. Uh, even show myself that I can do it. And uh, we had really big shows coming up. We were supposed to play with Head PE. We had, were supposed to play at Metal Fest. We were, like I was just, we were ready. We were all locked down, and we, we were pumped for the next show. And then everything got canceled. Uh, there's, there's really nothing for me to do. It, it, but this is a new opportunity with the live stream. Uh, this is something that I actually want to pursue and look into and say, you know what, this could be pretty cool uh, because who knows, this might be the new normal for a while. So uh, I actually would not mind doing that. And being part of Knee High Stripes uh, Seattle, uh, this, uh, this is still an opportunity for me to cover a show, shoot a show, uh, do a couple of videos, and then write it up. The second is that we were going to play the Oddities Flea Market at the Globe Theater down in LA the first weekend in April. And uh, that was going to be a huge opportunity to play at a legendary theater in front of tens of thousands of people for this insane event. But uh, uh, that got delayed as well. And who knows if that will be able to be done this year. Sorry, I'm, I'm cooking dinner. That's one of the other things that I, I do in COVID. I cook a lot more than I used to. Um, and door dashing a lot more. Uh, forget the ice cream at the grocery store, so it'll be the Tom Ass cooking show. I'll be guest starring with Rachel Ray anytime soon, or maybe Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart. Nick just joined the band before this all happened. 
We took a little bit of downtime when, when all the <laughs> when all the hysteria happened. Uh, we took a little bit of downtime to be safe and cautious, and then we decided that we were going crazy and we needed to play some music. So we haven't really been able to get together and practice and write. We're in the middle of recording a record, and and that's been put on hold. And um, and we're all self-funded and DIY, so us not being able to work that that you know cuts into that. So. It just means that everything's pushed back and the, the more time away from your art that you have, the more opportunity for there to be like, you know, downfalls. Like if people um, have falling outs or, or, or just don't have that time together, then things can kind of um, move different directions and people move on and move forward. And like now we don't even know when we can write it. Like we probably won't even be able to practice until we're supposed to do those shows. And even then, those will probably be canceled too at that point. I mean, we're all, we're working on new material in the studio and all that's on fucking hold now. We ended up in a place where we just can't do anything because we have new members and we need to practice and we can't practice. And the rest of us, we just, it just doesn't work. It's hard. Everyone is struggling with their personal lives. I was really enjoying playing out live a lot, and now I'm, because I hadn't played in like 10 years, and then come out and started last year doing all the, the shows, and, uh, and then I had to put a stop to it. I feel bad for the businesses. I feel bad for the uh, other musicians out there. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's been ideas out there already, uh, doing stream shows and everything, but personally, like, with this pandemic going on and it affecting musicians and everyone else's lifestyles, uh, I can feel it too. How this is affecting me is like pretty much kind of 50-50. It offers a lot of room for opportunity, but at the same time, it's really hard on an artist because we thrive off of that, that human connection. So as a photographer, it's really nice that I can go and capture something without the distraction of people walking by. But at the same time, I'm starting to realize that like people are an integral part of what makes everything so great. Like a handshake or a hug or just like having someone next to you when you take a picture and going, did you see that? It was just weird to see everyone uh, reacting the way they were. And I've, I've never seen anything like this in my life. And anything I could read talked about uh, the Spanish flu from 1918 and how they were doing similar things. It was all voluntary. And I don't really know what to think about that. I usually ask my father. And it all changed when my wife got really ill. Uh, she has a lot of the uh, risk factors for being serious. She has asthma, um, compromised immune system, neurological issues. Uh, she's um, over the age that's considered um, it to be worse. And even before this happened, uh, she would always get sicker than anyone else. If someone got a cold, she'd get the flu. If someone got the flu, she'd get bronchitis. Bronchitis, she would get pneumonia. And so she just had this history of always getting sicker than other people. And uh, the first few days, it wasn't really worrisome, but it just kept getting worse, it kept getting worse, it kept getting worse. And the symptoms she was having um, were very indicative that it was the coronavirus or is you know, at least mimicking it, and all we wanted was some relief for the symptoms and you know maybe a, a test to see if she had it or not. Being an essential employee that's working with the public, we thought it was fair to ask. And even though she continued to get sicker and sicker, we kept going to our local uh, health clinic, which is uh, Peace Health in Whatcom County, both the clinic and the hospital, St. Joe's, the emergency room, uh, imaging, blood work, the whole schmear, and they wouldn't test her. Um, first of all, they wouldn't even see her. They just kept doing on the phone interviews, and uh, she just kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker, and they kept prescribing um, ibuprofen, which in the media they're saying is not good, and they're saying it's okay, and who knows. Through some advice from 
one of my students' parents, I took her down south of Skagit County to a nonprofit health clinic. So the next day we went down there and uh, immediately they brought her in. Uh, they immediately tested her, put her on a nebulizer, which helped clear up her symptoms and make it easier to breathe and not hurt to breathe. They also told us that if we had stayed on Peace Health's treatment regimen that she probably would have died. Fuck you, Peace Health. All of us are artists in different ways outside of uh, doing music. So we're all keeping busy doing separate things. We're kind of going back to exploring our other passions outside of music. Uh, Jason, our drummer, he's a fantastic welder. He's made all the metal gear that we use during the sets. And so he's working on some other things, working on a new mic stand, working on actually making a metal Plague Doctor mask, which is dope. very cool and very relevant. Thankfully, we have like, you know, group messages and shit, which is, God, if we couldn't at least be connected, you know, that'd, that'd be so fucking sad. I can't be a stickler about it because my girlfriend uh, is like super vulnerable to it too. She has lupus and you know, that virus will fuck her up. We've been rocking it out, you know, making new outfits for Bishop and Starby, both in Toxic Zombie and for this TV show. Yep. So new costumes all around yep. for our characters. And then we have the radio show, which is business as usual because we do it right here in our living room. Yes, and you can listen to that live on KOUVradio.com on Tuesday nights. Yeah, or you can just ask Alexa or Google to play KOUV radio. From 6 to 10 p.m. Pacific yep. Standard Time. But you should listen to that station all the time. They have really good music. They do. Lots of good shows. It's good 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, more so than anything else, I can't wait to get back in the room with these crazy assholes behind me and start making some music again so we can bring it out to you people. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put this music to try and bring some normalcy back to our lives. For sure. You know, you know we can't even get together in groups. We can't. We didn't go to these places where we would go to rehearse, all these things are closed. So we've gotten to get together and make music, and then we've gotten to stream that. And it's been cool, I mean, the High Dive show, and I'm anxious to see how today's show went, but I mean, we had people, you know, Alaska, New York, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Michigan, California, Oregon, Idaho, Washington. We had people from Arizona, I mean, just all over the place, tuning in to watch these uh, live streams of us performing. It's difficult um, considering that we can't really even get together, um, but what we are trying to do is stay as active and relevant on our social media platforms as possible, um, digging up some old videos, you know, trying to do some gear talk. Gonna give me more time to record. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, a seven song project and uh, I have two more bass tracks to lay down and then all vocals and then I'll be mixing and mastering. So. Uh, that's going to be coming out pretty soon. Look for it. Renfield Syndrome. Hopefully we can return to some type of normalcy. Whatever that is, who knows? It's up in the air. Well, we, we like I said, we're using this time to catch him up on stuff. And we're also working right, new on, stuff. on some awesome, awesome new stuff that we're really excited about. And when we can play again, we can't wait to play it for everybody. What I started to do is I started going back through my archives and digging into stuff that I've done over the last six years and started putting an eye on them uh, from a um, from today's perspective rather than what I was looking at six years ago. The best thing that's happened um, is being able to live stream after months of not playing at Louis G's. Yeah, we took the stage at Louis G's and it was such a magical moment for us to feel even though no one was there in person, it was very much what Johnny said, it was a digital experience, but it still felt like as close as you can get right now to a live performance. And it was just, it was so great for us. Yeah. Um, and also just have the ability to promote Louis G's for donations and also for ourselves. And for all local musicians that you love and support and would like to see again uh, once we're able to and, and just trying to support one another as much as we can. We are saving money. Definitely not having to spend money getting to the shows, playing them, eat at restaurants near the venue, things like that, that normally we would be putting money into. Yeah, me and Wes kind of like sat 
for a moment and realize how much extra money we have because we're not paying for our practice space right now and fortunately this shows are more of a loss than a profit at this moment. We became closer as a family. Um, we've been doing a lot of uh, meetings, weekly meetings on Zoom to stay fresh and relevant and if anyone has, you know, being in a band is not just about picking up an instrument, it's about, you know, supporting your brother, whatever oh, yeah. they're, go they're going through. I'm, I'm lucky to be in a band with people that are used to getting over hardships and that no matter what, they, they keep pressing, they keep going and we've had to change up everything and it's been weird and clunky and lots, <laughs> lots of learning and roadblocks, but nothing is stopping us. Me and my bandmates in The Apparitionist, we're taking time to perfect our music and we're, we got an upcoming album. We are still working to complete the album as legality allows and still playing uh, <laughs> live stream events with no crowd, seeing, uh, seeing what we can do within the bounds of legality and safety. <laughs> Nurgle, black metal, Phoenix from ESP that was just released. I'm so looking forward to that. Um, I love those Fishman pickups and anything black and evil. I'm all about it. Um, yeah, that's kind of what's been keeping me busy. Yeah, I'm trying to keep in contact with uh, some of my um, Seattle peeps um, and what's going on up there. I feel like we can get these shows when everything's up back and running again because we are a very new band and we were just working our you know our way up <laughs> you know so i think we're we're in a spot that we can just pick up where we left off the cool thing though is is like we know we're not the only ones it's true you know we are we're just one of fucking i mean my my, my brother-in-law used to tell me this all the time growing up it drove me crazy uh, but bands are a dime a dozen, right? So what makes you special, right? And, and in this particular situation, it showed that we're all the same. We're all going through the same BS, whether we think it's BS, whether we take it seriously, whatever it is, man, like, it's affecting us. We're all in the boat and together. So, I don't know. Sure. If anything, even though the shows may not be the same, I hope the creativity is the same, if not heightened yeah. by uh, just desire to create and, and express whatever this is that we're all feeling and going through into, into song or into art of any kind. Definitely go to our YouTube, Freestar On Air. Yes. And subscribe. We're submitting new videos every day because mm -hmm. we have nothing but time, so we should have a lot of them over the next month. <laughs> <laughs> We've been having uh, like individual practices, like I practice with him and right. then I practice with him. I practice at home. Three of us practice well, yeah, and then space, and then as as the phases moved on in this situation, we've kind of expanded to more people practicing, and and today, like what you said, we we rented Tony's house so we could have the safe social distance practice. It's been easy, kind of, to a little bit think outside the box, you know, try and cut time, uh, play a video game here and there. Uh, I took all my like figurines that I've collected over the years uh, about I think it was like middle of last month and took a huge ass photo of them. It's, it's been hard on the musician side. Some of the ideas currently right now are kind of cool, but I feel the long run it's just you miss a crowd, you miss that electricity. I miss I miss a couple of the venues. Um, another thing actually we did today uh, is we just got done speaking with Decade Sound Studio about getting in there and doing a couple little videos and a live stream set there um, for hopefully the end of April. So we'll see. That would be really great. We can definitely appreciate social distancing in that large of an area should that still be the case when that time comes. Um, so just trying to stay active, stay out there, stay communicating with people is, you know, really what we're trying to do and keep our spirits up, write some new stuff. I know our guitarist has actually been playing around with some riffs, so maybe, you know, we'll come up with some material out of this for the next album. Working out at home and doing these live streams, uh, which have been pretty fun. You know, a lot of people have been really cool and it's not the real thing, but you know, it's, it's still pretty fun. It's still pretty cool. And, appreciate my friends still like checking out the live streams and whatnot. 
grinding out Final Fantasy games lately, and honestly, I'm getting burnt out on that. But yeah, I don't know. What can you do? I mean, during this, it just teaches us a whole lot about that whole aspect, like being on, the online presence, you know, like um, live streaming and being in touch with your fans that much fucking more. You know, we, we try to do that anyways, but I mean, this is just bringing everyone together so much more. Yeah, I mean... And this is just, like, it's been so great. It's really kind of shown how vital it is to keep in touch with people. Uh, and I love that, yeah. Because it's like, you know, traveling around the world and, like, meeting these fantastic and amazing people. It's like, and, and being, having to do this quarantine shit, it's been like, it's just brought everyone together that much more. Those projects are moving forward. The radio show is still going on. We're still shooting segments for the um, television show podcast mm -hmm. um, that we do. See you next Tuesday. So we're still moving forward on all those things because we have all the equipment here at home and we have nothing but time. So our projects are moving forward. Swimmingly. Quite, yeah, quite nice. So We caught up on a lot of crazy TV like Tiger King with did you notice my Carol Baskins inspired outfit today? That might get you stabbed or shot. She's a murderer. She is a murderer. That's true. She murdered her husband. I'm going to go on record and say it. I'm making more material, learning our instruments, and trying to evolve our band. Um, it made us really kind of sit back and think about what we're doing and if this is worth it because how much money we do spend on it. And we're hearing all these bands that are losing money right now. I'm like, how did you do it? <laughs> it's not really much of a setback. I think it is pushing us forward because A, it's given us a lot of time to really think about things and restructure what we want to do with this band and get us a break I think we needed that we didn't want to accept. <laughs> I feel very fortunate in that, and even more fortunate, like he said, that we're asked to come play, and we can still come and play where a lot of people have not had that opportunity yet. So I really love playing with these guys, and it's just been great to be able to get together a couple of times and just come in and have fun and, and wing it, no rehearsals, and it's all good. It's, it's really good, so I'm really happy about that and I just hope we can do some good for the people that we're trying to help. And if we make anything, it's something, like you said, it's a, it's a cup of water in the ocean, but it's still something and we can feel like we contributed. And that feels pretty good. Just thank you so much. And I really hope that Atrocity Girl can see you again live as soon as possible. When I can find the energy, I go and work on the back and tracks, so sound engineering, just fine-tuning the sense, mixing the backing tracks a little better. Um, it's not very rewarding, unfortunately, so, eh. Indeed, these are trying times. But leave it up to the artist to find innovative and creative ways to keep busy, to motivate others, and to keep their legacy burning. One of my all-time favorite quotes has always been from Khalil Gibran. And that quote is, out of suffering have emerged the strongest of souls. The most massive characters are seared with scars. The artist is put to the test. Our true grit and perseverance truly challenged. Will you give up? Will you realize that music and photography was not your purpose? Or will you make it to the end stronger than ever, ready to kick some ass? God, I wanted to come back. Really, really, really wanted to come back. And I think everyone wants all their lives to come back too. Because uh, you can only last so long with staying at home and yanking your crank all day. It's, it's hard to believe that this is happening in, in our lifetime, but it is. Um, and as Jeff said, being able to get together you know, under these circumstances and play music together is a, it's a real privilege. I mean, truly a privilege. Um, get up there and do what we do, do what we love doing, and what can be better. When it comes to shows, yeah, there aren't many going on right now, and that's in, and I sort of scratch my head and sing, is this, is this uh, where I need to be right now? Am I, uh, am I done? Am, is this the end of the road for me? And I thought, nah, 
No, this isn't the end of the road. The music scene, oddly, has seemed to have like solidified more, which is really interesting to see it because it's so drama-filled normally. It should be like this. Yeah, and so... We're all here for the same reasons. It's interesting, so... I mean, I guess if there's any positive takeaway from everything that's happening is that it's it's seemingly to, it's solidifying how everyone feels about music and art and really how it gets you through everyday life and it gets you through these dark fucking times. Everyone's scared of what's going on and what's going to happen and what's the world going to be like. I read somewhere, um, there's a Chinese proverb where they talk about crisis also being um, opportunity. This is like an opportunity for all of us to take this uh, situation. Either we're gonna take like be weighed down by it and just think of only the negative and just let it really just eat you up inside, or you can make the most of it. Look at the silver lining and take an opportunity of like we're all in this together. <laughs> These are her pine cones. <laughs> Why am I holding pine I cones? Know. Oh. The, the one thing we're dedicated to is it's not gonna stop us. It's not gonna slow us down. We're gonna keep pushing forward and, and use this catastrophe to, to keep moving on. And, and that's what it's about. You have to adapt and, and overcome. That's what we're gonna do. It's on 2020. And uh, I just want to give a big shout out to the whole scene for not giving up yet. But we're never going to give up. And you, Josh Hamilton. We'll just, uh, we'll wait it out. Um, but uh, there's a lot of people out there that do it for a living. And they're on the road. And, and uh, a lot of staff members and security and bartenders and venue owners. It's a really unfortunate time. So any opportunity you guys have to help them out, definitely do so. Um, hopefully we'll get back to it. But uh until then, make sure you're tuning into the live streams. Uh, the community's trying to do some cool stuff to put things together, and um, I definitely want you guys to support that. And I think the other thing that's really cool about this is like, you know, because we're all in this together, we're all starting from the same point, building up the foundation as a whole, you know? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. The internal and eternal optimist within me thinks that this is what's going to bring about the like rain city renaissance we're gonna have all of this resolve and then we're all gonna create such beautiful things out of all of this pain and tragedy be safe have fun everybody be safe drink a beer stay six feet apart wash your fucking hands party and listen to woodshed this is a very important topic such an amazing documentary to um get seattle especially that was the epicenter for a long time of the epidemic. So, a pandemic. Yeah. Um, fight right. the virus. Right. Stay safe, stay healthy. Wash your hands. Pine cone. We just hope everyone out there stays safe. You know, be careful. Stay six feet away from each other. And, uh, you know, we'll get through this. We've been through many a plague in society. So, this is just another one for the history books. Keep slaying, motherfuckers. I just, I truly wish the best for everybody. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Yeah, peace Thank out, you. world. Stay safe. And cut! Stay healthy, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. I don't want to see anybody be my dad. No, we love all of you. We want to hang out and see you again. So, be safe. Fight the rock with virus. Or, <laughs> fight the virus, virus with rock. With rock. Wow. And, Fight the virus with rock. With rock.